that cute kid we all saw grow up in the screen. She's 16 today, and if you don't think that makes me feel like a creaking antique, you're crazy. Like everybody else, Jane started life as a baby. This was snapped when she was nine months old. She's three here, and already a radio star in her hometown, Atlanta, Georgia. In her first public appearance, Jane scored a knockout. She's been doing it ever since. At the age of eight, she appeared with Shirley Temple in Bright Eyes and became a star overnight. This is the way she looked in her first starring picture, Ginger. When she was 12, Jane was noted for her harem scarum roles, such as she played in the Arizona Wildcat. At 15, Jane still liked her action, rough and tumble. Here's how she looked last year when our camera caught her at the Palm Springs Rodeo. And today, at the ripe old age of 16, ready to lead a caravan of her young Hollywood friends who are helping to celebrate her birthday. Jane loaded her friends on a flock of hay racks while she visited back and forth on pumpkins, her pet Palomino. Reminds me of my own hay riding days, only I always got hay fever. Look sharp and you'll see Peggy and Gloria Lloyd, Harold's lovely daughters. And here's Journey's End, Jim Jeffrey's famous barn operated by the former heavyweight champion of the world. Oh, a hayride's lots of fun. It puts you in the mood for the barn dance that should always follow it. Here are some more of Hollywood's juvenile celebrities. Jean Reynolds and pretty Cora Sue Collins, who's been in pictures since she was a baby. Just mention a barn without even a dance and you'll find Leo Carrillo. Leo hasn't missed a birthday party of Jane's in five years. Jane didn't confine her guest list to Hollywood. She invited some of the army, too. Sixteen candles on the cake and dozens of friends to help eat it. Lots of famous faces around Jane. Bobby Breen at the left, Bobby Jordan next to him, Edith Fellows, Butch and Buddy, small but mighty, and Cora Sue Collins to the right of Jane. Then Juanita Quigley and Joan Carroll. Happy birthday, Janie. Freddie Bartholomew brought Jean Howlett, Jane's chum. Jim Jeffries, the grand old man of the prize ring, is one of Jane's guests. Jeffries gift to Jane was an exhibition bout staged for her friends. The sluggers are Spider Mock and Clifton Fields, two of Jeffries' new protégés. Sidney Miller, Mickey Rooney's bosom pal, was master of ceremony. Army gave her a spin and a peep. Yes, a peep. The peeps the jeeps that didn't need a spinach, so it never grew up. <laughs> Poor Bob Watson does a slow burn. He waited all day for a dance with Jane, and then an army uniform cut him out. Bob. A uniform always gets them. Bobby Jordan won the door prize, and being a gallant young gentleman, presented it to Edith Fellows. Growing boys need lots of food, and Dickie Moore is growing fast. Dickie's been entertaining us on the screen for more than 10 years, and he's getting to the age now where there's plenty of danger in those big brown eyes. Hot dogs, soda pop, sandwiches, candy, and now toasted marshmallows the grand finale to a grand day. Oh, it was a perfect party, and everybody, including Jane and her mother, were plenty tired when it was over. Congratulations, Janie. I know your millions of fans wish you as much success and happiness during the next 16 years of your life as you've had during the first. You've heard their laughter and applause many, many times over your loudspeakers. 
as Uncle Sam's soldiers and sailors visit the Bob Hope broadcast. But it's a real thrill to actually see them enjoying themselves. That's why I took my movie camera to one of Bob's recent air shows, to see these hard-working fighting men relax and to share their thrills on this particular night as they watched a famous artist who entertained their fathers in the First World War. None other than our beloved Elsie Janet. Let's see, Elsie, you were the sweetheart of the first AEF. That's right. And that was 25 years ago. Well, that would make you... Uh, exactly 38. 38. You mean to say you were a sweetheart when you were 13? Why not? No sense waiting till the last minute. Yes. Hey, Bob, these men today look in fine shape. Just look at them. That's right. Every one of them is ready for action. Yeah? Yeah, I've been all through the camp here. Let me tell you, they'll fight at the drop of an Esquire. Tell me, Elsie, did they have jeeps in the old days? Jeeps? What's a jeep? That's the massage treatment on wheels. Do you think you'll go to the front in this war, Bob? Well, no. I guess you won't be able to on account of your physical condition. Yes. What's wrong with my physical condition? Well, most of it's gone to the front already. <laughs> well, I may... I may have a little corporation that's that's not fat, it's solid muscle. Yeah, look, Bob, whether it's iron or aluminum, a pot's still a pot. <laughs> Bob Hope's regular radio gang made a big hit, too. Francis Langford, Skinny Ennis, and, of course, the Professor Jerry Colonna. Hurry up, Professor, or we'll miss the train. Okay, here's the turk, Hope. First, I'll load on your suitcase. I'll get down on my knees, you pile them up on my back. Okay, Colonna. That's right, now... Put them up, one on top of the other. Don't be afraid. Put them all on there, Hope. Keep piling them up. There you are, Colonel. You're down on your knees with 12 suitcases on your back. What are you going to do now? Well, I'll try to move forward. Try to move backward. Try to move sideways. Well, no sense wasting a position like this. Get out the dice. Bob's informal entertainment after the broadcast is always a riot. It's too bad we never get to hear it on the air. Oh, brother. But I just finished working on a picture uh, just the other day. Yesterday, in fact, we finished. Finished doing a picture called Road to Morocco with uh, Dorothy Lamour and Bing Crosby. You know, Lamour, the girl who sat on the shoestring, now she wears it for a costume. <laughs> and of course, I know you know Crosby, the singing jockey. I know you know him. <laughs> oh, he's a grand guy. I shouldn't say that. He's a wonderful fella. I love him, even though he has got a lot of money. <laughs> And he makes a fortune on his glue factory and everything. But I want to tell you, he pays so much income tax every time a Douglas bomber flies over his house at Curtsy's. <laughs> of course, you know, I did, I did a picture with Madeline Carroll. <laughs> right ahead of that. Oh, my. Madeline Carroll. Eight weeks. And I got money, too. It was divine. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I had a very stupid director. He kept asking me to study my lines. Imagine working with Madeline Carroll, studying my lines. But all I want to tell you is that it's a thrill being here, and I'm, I know I speak for the rest of the gang in saying that I hope we get together again soon. Thank you. Good night. So long, Bob. And God bless each and every one of you men of the service. We're honored to have had you in Hedda Hopper's Hollywood. <laughs>